Hey family, this is Pastor Travis. I'm Pastor Jackie. Hey, I'm so glad you guys have decided to hang out with us at our online campus, checking out this week's message. It is dynamic. Be sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to stay up with all the newest updates right here at Forward City. Yeah, hey listen, grab your notepad. It's about to go down. Get ready for your life to be changed forever. Your past is going, your future is waiting. Let's move forward together. Welcome back, Ford family, to another week of House Church. And today is a national holiday. It is Mother's Day. Can we cheer for all the mothers in the room? Yeah, let's go, man. I just would have to say that being a mother and being able to have the opportunity to come into this role has been one of the greatest challenges, but one of the most rewarding things that the father has ever allowed me to participate in. And I want to take my hat off to all the mothers that are watching online, to every mother that's in this room. It means everything, the amount of equipping, the amount of sacrifice, all the unconditional love that you've given to all of those children, whether you are actual mother by birth or you've stepped into the role of being a mom for someone else, be it a God mommy, there are just so many people that are navigating the way and the path of allowing other people to be equipped by the way that they've lived their life. And so today we take our hats off to you and we say that we celebrate you. And I have to take the time to take a personal um, moment to be able to say, Mommy, I love you. Happy Mother's Day to my mother in love. Happy Mother's Day. And to every mother again, I just want to salute you, let you know that you're doing a good job, that the Lord sees you and he is proud of the way you stewarded the opportunity to be a mommy. Great. I feel like there's so many times in moments like this that we shy away from the fact that Mother's Day is not only a time of celebration, but there are women that are out there dealing with issues like infertility right. or or they might even be struggling with the loss of their mom. And so right. I didn't want to just shy away from it and just, you know, sure. try to uh, I guess uh, skirt over it but yeah. I wanted to take the opportunity to pray for mommies that sure. actually may be mothering and might be struggling with the idea of they're doing a good job maybe you're a new mom mm -hmm. or you might just have um, some anxiety about the fact that today's supposed to be a day where we celebrate and you don't have your mom to touch and so I just want to take the opportunity to cover them would y'all bow your heads and pray for with me sure. to cover them God we thank you for today thank you father for all those mothers out there that are um, blazing a path to be able to set up their children to live in a legacy of fruit I thank you, God, that they are training their children up in the way that they should go because when they're old, they won't depart according to your word. I pray, Jesus, that if there is anybody struggling today with loneliness, that you would be a comforter, that you would be a friend, that you would be a mother to the motherless as you are a father to the fatherless. I thank you, Jesus, that you are ever-present help in the time of trouble. I thank you, God, that you're giving hope right now to a woman that is a mother-to-be. Yes, I speak that in faith, that if you're dealing with infertility right now, that I pray that Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals, he would touch yes. the womb of those that would be that are dealing with the issue of infertility. God, you are a mind regulator, you are a heart fixer, and you are a body healer. And I thank you, Jesus, that right now, as I pray supernaturally, you're going into every home that is dealing with PCOS. You're going into every home that may be dealing with any type of issue that would cause them not to be able to bring forth in your name. You are the God that gives life. And so I pray right now that you would join your faith with their faith, that you would bring forth exactly what you desire, and they would have the faith to believe you for it. We give you praise. We give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 It's going to be an amazing day. And the father has had my heart burning with this idea of legacy. Mm. Yeah. Legacy. I was thinking about why do we celebrate so big on Mother's Day? And what is that all about? And I got a question that I want you all to consider. Have you ever considered what imprint you are leaving on the future based on how you live today? Mm. If we summed up all of your actions and we were able to write a story, what would be the title of the story that you are actually teaching by the way you live currently. Mm. Legacy. Mm. I want y'all to say this with me out loud. God desires, God desires that I live, live legacy-minded. Legacy -minded. And that's our topic for today. We want to talk about what I'm leaving behind. Mm. There are so many people in this room that are watching online right now that have different stories from different backgrounds, but I believe that we could all center around this one truth. People learn by the way we live. Good. People learn from the way we live our life, the choices we make, the choices we don't make. Mm. They learn and they're able to have impact made on their lives as a result of the thing that I say or I don't say, the way I act, even the way I posture myself, the words I choose, mm. the things I do and how I enter a room matter. They wow. live beyond the moment that we're presently in. Mm. This is what legacy is all about. And I want you to recognize that our words, our actions have the potential to live beyond the moment Good. 
and actually last for a lifetime. Good, man. Legacy is the things we leave behind that are carried forward by mm. others. Mm. I want us to consider today what type of legacy are we leaving behind? Mm. Mm. And see, I think one, one reality is, is if we, we took a survey in the room, if I asked you, what's your legacy, Lydia, or oh, what's your legacy, Micah? You would naturally think, uh, I'm leaving behind this positive legacy because all of us desire to believe that right. we're doing this yeah. amazing thing for the world. Oh, I'm saving right. lives and I'm doing this amazing thing. But I want you to know that the true proof of legacy is found in the things that not we, not, not just the things that we desire to happen, but in yeah. the things that we actually consistently mm. do day after day wow. after day. It's in the thing that we consistently do that we find our legacy because it's those mm. things that are inevitable for those that are around us to reproduce. Yeah. Wow. Mm. If somebody's watching your life right now, Man. what are they reproducing? Wow. Legacy. It's not, it's not just the stuff that we say we should do. It's the stuff that we actually live out each mm. and every day of our lives. And I want so us good. to just take a moment to think about that in light of, in light of Mother's Day. Mm. How many things do you do the way you do because mama them did it like that? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, no, no, take the moment to pause. Yeah. I want you to drop in your comments, in the comments right now, how many of those weird things do you say just like that? Because, well, that's what mama them said was right. Yeah. I'll give you an example. So my mama's middle name could be Miss Confession. She was always big as I was growing up. Like, still is. Still is. If I were to say, Mommy, I got a headache. Oh, no, 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 Jackie, don't confess that. And I'm like, but I got a headache. Yeah. Or, um, I, 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 Mama, I don't know how. Don't confess that you don't know how. You can do all things through Christ wow. who strengthens you. She was a woman of confession. Mm -hmm. And by nature, I re reproduce the same thing. Don't tell me my child is wild or my child is bad. Don't confess that over my baby. Right, yeah. What she consistently lived in my life time over time, not what she said she should do, mm, what yeah. she actually did yeah. showed up in my life. If you look under the cabinets in the house, in my house, in every room, you'll find cocoa butter. We were a cocoa butter <laughs> lotion type of people. See, we had lived by cocoa butter. Yeah. I used to fall all the time when I was a kid. I'm talking about super clumsy. And my mama used cocoa butter and all my black spots went away. And so we actually <laughs> used this thing. And because we saw it work for us, we consistently used it over and over wow. and over again. Legacy is continuing to repeat itself. Cocoa butter showing up at my house. Cocoa butter showing up at Norman's house. And if I take that a little further and I even think about the Green family. Oh, God. Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> my sister-in-laws and my mother, they have this thing where they use shades as an accessory like a headband. Uh -huh. If you find any one of them, you're always going to find shades on their head. Not because they're wearing them. It's a part of the outfit. Like, it's a whole vibe. Uh -huh. And you're never going to leave my mama Green's presence without circling up to pray traveling mercies. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Try it. Try it and see. It's so beautiful how they always congregate and they center around big meals and fellowship. It's big in the green household. And as you see naturally, the greens are still living this wow. understanding that fellowship is important. Yeah. It's not what you say you should do. It's what you live yeah. that people actually reproduce. Yeah. I want you to recognize right. that our life is always preaching. Mm. Yeah. Our life is always preaching. What is it that your life is saying to those that you have your sphere of influence over? Man. Are you telling them? In your actions, uh, that this is okay to believe, or are you saying um, that this is proper behavior because I behave that way? What's truly important is shown by your actions and the way you live each and every day to those that you are around. And I think the funny thing is, is that we have to recognize that the answers to those questions like what's important to believe and what's priority and what matters is not found in the things that we say, Travis. Mm -hmm. It's found in what we actually live out each and every day. People watch your feet much more than they watch what you say. Wow. They watch your feet much more than they watch what you say. I wonder what my life's message is today. I wonder what story I'm telling by the priorities that I make and I don't make. God cares about what we're leaving behind for people to look at, to read about, to say of our lives as a result of the way we choose to live. And I'm telling you, there's a, I, I just think it's important that we take it beyond our experience, but take it to the text in this God breathed word to be able to see how he allows us to look at scriptures in the Bible and see nuggets and principles that we're able to, to eat from and take with us to be proof of legacy that we continue to carry forward. You know, the guy that was best, best at leaving legacy behind was Jesus himself. Yeah. What he did 2,000 years ago is still living. This God that gave it all. This God that sacrificed. This God that showed up and forgave 70 times seven. Mm. 
These are legacies that he set in motion for us to continue to live by. I actually had the privilege of reading 1 Kings chapter 17. And I'm telling you, this prophet Elijah, he came through in his understanding that everything he did mattered. Not just in the moment, but there was going to be a, a country girl named Jackie reading, going into Devo time to find principles that she can continue to live forward as a result of him making the decision to live it. Mm -hmm. I want us to take a look at the text, 1 Kings 17. And I'll tell you, there were five principles that came to life for me that I feel like if we take the moment in light of the fact that we now understand that people are looking at our lives to determine how they should live their lives and we are able to take his example and to embody some of these characteristics not only will our lives be changed mm -hmm. but the lives of those that are watching us mm -hmm. will also be changed wow. we don't make the decisions that we make just for ourselves yeah. we make them for everybody that's following us and so we find things in this story I'm just going to give you the five so that you can be prepared to see them in the story before we read um, things like prayer mm -hmm. things like humility obedience faith and, in, and even resolve. Having the ability to, after you've done all the stand, stand again was something that I also saw in this story. This is what resolve is. And so I want to take a look at the first seven verses of 1 Kings 17. I am telling you, this prophet, this man of God blew my mind. Mm -hmm. Let's read. The Bible says in 1 Kings 17, Now Elijah was from Tishbe in Gilead, and he told King Ahab, as surely as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, the God I serve, there will be no dew or rain during the next few years Amen. until I give the word. Mm -hmm. Then the Lord said to Elijah, go to the east and hide in Kirith brook near where it enters the Jordan. Drink from the brook and eat what the ravens bring you. For I have commanded, to, I, for I have commanded them to bring you food. Mm -hmm. He goes on in verse five to say, so Elijah did as the Lord told him. Y'all just hear that. So Elijah did as the Lord told him and camped beside Kirth Brook, east of the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat each morning and evening, and he drank from the brook. In verse 7, he says, but after a while, the brook dried up, for there was no rainfall anywhere in the land. And I just want to walk through the first seven verses because the story goes on and it's fruitful. But we find all five of these principles, prayer, obedience, humility, resolve, and faith, even in these first seven verses. And the thing that I love that is so telltale about legacy is it has everything to do with consistency. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not just what you do in a moment. Yep. Wow. It's what you continue to do over and yeah. over and over again that people catch a hold to yeah. and one with. Mm -hmm. I want us to recognize also that the thing that made this story most impactful is that Elijah the prophet was in a moment of crisis and we don't get to pause our message in a time of crisis. Amen. We're in a moment where there's COVID time and it's crisis and we are looking around and we might not be actually acting in the fruit of what the Lord has passed on to us being men and women of faith and speaking those things that be not as though they were. Mm -hmm. We don't get to pause our message. Mm -hmm. What message are people reading of and eating of yeah. as they call you yeah. on the phone? Are all, all you doing is repeating what the news says? Or are you being oh, still and know that he is God? Yeah. Are you you challenging yourself to get in the face of the Lord to say, Daddy, what do you say about these yes. things? Yeah. We don't get to pause our message in times of crisis. And Elijah did a beautiful thing in that he was able to live consistently all throughout this text, even in a time of crisis. And so we jump into, into the first four verses where it talks about how the Bible introduces a major prophet and it basically talks about in commentary how this king, this prophet shows up out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. There's really no history, no lineage mm -hmm. that we're that is talked about about Elijah. Mm -hmm. All we do is see this major prophet, and he's like the prophet of prophets. Like he is, I mean, like in a league all of his own on his own. And I can understand just from looking at a snapshot mm -hmm. of his life and what he decided to do, why he was ranked among prophets in the way that he was. And so we drop into these first four verses where the Bible is talking about how he goes boldly to this to this king Ahab and he tells him boldly what the Lord has said and I started thinking about so he goes and he announces this word that there would not be any rain for several years and he doesn't do this timidly he does it with boldness yeah. how did he know as a prophet what to tell the king without having first spent time with the Lord. Come on. The principle of prayer. Come on. Come on. He knew exactly what to say. And he said it boldly because he wasn't speaking in his own merit. He was speaking right. 
basically as a messenger to what the Lord had already given him in a time of prayer. Mm -hmm. And I love that it didn't just stop there. He says, the Lord said also to go to the east and hide and curse brook near where the water enters in Jordan and to drink it. So he gives all this instruction, even after making this bold command to, uh, to King Ahab. Basically, the Lord didn't just give him instruction to speak to this king and leave him out there. He also gave him a warning to know that he was going to be pursued by this king as a result of giving him such a harsh word and as a result of seeing this act this thing actually come to pass. He was going to need to hide himself to not end up encountering the, the turmoil or the threat that was going to come as a result of Ahab. And so I just love how we see the principle of prayer and humility show up. I thought about this, that you know how sometimes when you start being used of the Lord and you're anointed by him and you start doing a little bit for God, it's so easy to lose humility and yep. recognizing yes. that you still need to go before the yes. Lord and vow to get the next instruction yes. because had he said the word and not gone back to the Father, he wouldn't have had the understanding to know that it was also time now in verse 2 and 3 to go and hide, mm. to continue mm. to preserve himself. Mm. I think that we find so many people that they become, sir, oh, I stopped the rain and mm -hmm. stopped bowing before the Lord mm -hmm. and, and literally just marveling all the, in all the things that the Lord does mm -hmm. through them without recognizing that it was the Lord that so first good. gave the word. And so mm -hmm. prayer and humility are the things that we find in these first few verses that I feel it's just so imperative. We have to not be um, distracted by what the Lord through, does through us and stop and not go back to him to find out what it is that he's saying next for us good. to do. Amen. Good. He gave him instruction on provision and so we go from there after getting prayer and humility to look at verse 5 and 6 and the Bible says in verse 6 so Elijah did as the Lord told him and I want to pause right there because the principle of obedience shows up mm. come on um, yeah. Pastor Travis actually brought it up in his last message where there are times where we hear the word but we don't actually respond to the instruction mm. that we heard mm. and as a result of not responding to the instruction we don't get the provision that we expect mm. wow, yeah. I think we sometimes we'll read this and we don't read the Bible fully in understanding that he did what God told him to do. After hearing the word, after getting an instruction because of prayer and humility, he takes the word and he actually obeys, which is what verse five says. And as a result of obedience, he sees God fulfill on his promise. A moment in verse six where we're able to see where we have an opportunity for gratitude. Sometimes we get so busy and doing the Lord's work and doing Amen. what he's called us to do that we don't pause and say, Daddy, you told me to go to that brook. You told me that I could drink there and that the ravens would feed me. And I just take this moment to say thank you. Mm -hmm. This moment of gratitude to see that God, the God that says he's the God of yes and amen, will actually do what he's instructed after doing what he's instructed us to do, he actually comes through on his word and does exactly what he says. And I think that there are so many people right now watching. It's not that you, as my husband would say, say that you, you don't have a hearing problem. You have a doing problem. God spoke a word. You know what it takes to actually produce fruit. But are you are you like one of those people that continue to watch the pot, the pot, the boil, boil and it never boils over because you're continuing to watch it? I think it's like almost thinking like a former a former planting seed and then as a result of looking at with the natural eye and not having faith and saying well I don't see anything coming forth I'm going to dig it up and I'm not going to actually stand still and see that the Lord is going to do exactly what he said he was going to do after gaining the instruction we have to be still and know and obey and as a result of obedience we get the opportunity for God to bring gratitude in our life as a result of seeing him do exactly what he said he was going to do we drop into verse 7 and the Bible says, but after a while, the brook dried up for, for there was no rainfall anywhere in the land. And this is where we introduce the last two principles that I talked about faith and resolve. Mm -hmm. If you think about the story, he tells him in the beginning that this was the place of provision. Mm -hmm. Go to this brook and I'm going to provide for you there. I'm going to send a raven to feed you each and every day. And this will be the place where you gain your nourishment. We, we get to verse 7 and it's like a lot of our lives where we find ourselves the Lord has spoke a word and we find ourselves in a place where in the natural what he mm. said no longer makes sense mm. your instruction dried up mm. what do we do in the moment where we put out our faith and we made the decision to obey the Lord and the Lord changes his mind mm. He moves and does something different. See, the reality is, is that he's a, yes, he is the same God yesterday and today and forever, but he is, a, he's also the God that changes and he is ever evolving and he's yeah. always doing, behold, I do a new thing. Do you not perceive it? He's also that God as well. And so 
The thing that I love is here, the same principle, the same thing that taught us to believe him when we had to go sit by the brook and allow the raven to feed us, it has to show up in faith and resolve to say, Daddy, if you dried up this spot, if you took this job, if you, and come on COVID, if you did this thing that didn't make any sense, you allow a virus to hit our land, then surely you must have another instruction in mind that I can come back to you to say, Daddy, if you did that, then you can do this. If you fed me by the ravens in the time of last season, then there surely is something in verse 8 that has to be coming. Because if you draw up this spot, you have to be looking for a new way to show yourself. Oh, Je Jehovah Jireh, I want you to show up in this moment and I will have the faith and resolve to believe that you still can. Yeah. I won't look to old bread. Give me this day my daily bread. I'll have the resolve to believe that you can still do exactly what you said. We drop into verse 8 and I love that verse 8 through 24. It basically shows these same five principles over again. Mm -hmm. I talked to you about that. Consistency produces legacy. Mm -hmm. It's not the stuff that you do for a little while. It's the stuff that you do and you mm -hmm. do and you do and you keep on doing that brings forth the ability for the people that are around you are to inevitably be able to reproduce. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in verse 8 and 9, and we start to see this whole principle of humility and prayer showing up. After the brook dries up, he has the opportunity to hear the Lord speak again. The Lord says to Elijah, go and live in the village of Zarephath near the city of Sidon. I have instructed a widow there to feed you. God gives us instruction step by step. He gives us instruction step by step so that we continue to come to him in humility, independence, saying, Daddy, if you don't show up again like you did the time when you were feeding me at the brook, I won't know the way that I should take. Amen. And I trust you in the same way I trusted you in the last season. Mm -hmm. In prayer and humility, he finds the next instruction for his next season. Without prayer and humility, he wouldn't have known to be in, 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 in pursuit of the widow. Mm -hmm. How many times have we found ourselves in a new season mad at God because he dried up the last season? Mm. But, but, but we didn't know what to look for freshly in the new season because we didn't go back in humility and prayer. So good. The prophet Elijah, he had the principle that he's given us now to carry forward with us. If God does it a new way, do the same thing, the same principle that you did the last time to get the answer that you needed. Go back in humility and prayer to see what he's saying now. What's the new source of my provision, Lord? What instructions are we missing because we keep missing our time of prayer? What instruction? What person are we supposed to be sensitive to see that, oh, there's something there. There's, there, there's something. This must be an answer to prayer because I was with the Lord. And he had already given me a telltale sign to know that there's supposed to be a girl that shows up in my life. There's come supposed on. to be a husband that shows up at this church. There's come supposed on. to be a, another job that's supposed to come this day because I had my time with the Lord. Because I didn't depend on myself to know the way that I should take. I humbled myself and I prayed and he showed up. Just like he did in the times in the past. Mm. We have to have prayer and humility. Mm. We go back to verse sure. 10. Just like in verse 5 when the Bible talks about he did what the Lord says. Verse 10 says, so he went to Zarephath. Obedience shows up again and he saw a widow. And so I love verse 10 through 16 where it goes on to tell a story of how King, I said, not King, Prophet Elijah does exactly what he's gotten, gotten as instruction. The Lord tells him to go to Seraphim at this gate. He's going to find his widow. And there she's been instructed. She's been commanded by the Lord to feed him. God doesn't ever leave you out there. If he draws up something, there's always a new way of provision. And so he gets there. He knows exactly who to look for. And he finds himself where he goes and he says to this widow, he says, hey, go get me a, a drink. And oh, yeah, don't forget to get me a little bit of bread. And this is something that I found that was beautiful. There are oftentimes in prayer, the Lord will tell us who to go looking for and what they'll be to our life, but he'll hide how vital it is for us to show up for theirs. Wow. wow. So good. Think about that. How many times have we come into contact with people knowing that we were in need, but not recognizing how in need they were of what we carry? Wow. This is what we find right here in verses 10 through 16. The so Bible good. says, as a result of him obeying, he finds this widow who's in desperate need. She's actually in the process of preparing her funeral meal, not just for her, but for her children. 
or for her child. And she literally says to him as a result of him asking for him to, for her to provide drink and bread. Um, I don't have anything. I'm literally just trying to, to, to grab a few sticks. I'm trying to put together our last meal. And we're literally getting ready to take the little oil that we have and the little flour that we have and prepare to eat our last meal and die. Amen. If we don't go to the Lord in prayer and humility and then obey, because the promise is attached to the obedience. Yep. We don't show up for the people that are in desperate need of us. Their life is on the line and hangs in the balance of your obedience. You watching online. They need you to humble yourself and pray. And after receiving the instruction to do what the Lord said, show up at the gate and ask the widow for bread and for water. What is the Lord asking for you to do in this season? Just like he asked Elijah to do for the widow. He goes to her. He finds out in verse 11 through 16 that this widow is at her end and she's preparing for her and her son's funeral meal. And she tells Elijah she only has a small supply of flour and a little oil. And I love that in verse 13, we get to see again faith and resolve show up because I'll tell you, it's nothing like preaching the message that you've actually lived. Yep. Mm-hmm. In verse 13, Elijah goes on to tell this widow who says, I only have a little bit. I actually thought it was kind of funny when I was reading the story because it seemed as if he lacked compassion. Yep. I'm telling you, I don't have, I, all I have is a little bit and I'm preparing to die. And what you say back to me is, okay, okay, I understand you only have a little bit. Let me tell you what you do. You give me first. You, prov- you prepare a meal for me first and then... Mm-hmm. As a result of giving first, the Lord is going to do in verse 14 this promise. He says, no matter how small it is that you have, the principle of giving first, giving it will be given. It's still in, it's still in progress. It's still, it's still alive and well. That principle of giving first and recognizing that the Lord of the harvest will show up for you is still present right now. We can't lack in our understanding that no matter how small it is, no matter how little it seems, the Lord still desires for us to sacrifice and give it first so that he can give back good measure, press down shaking together and running over into our bosom Mm. he wants us to give and as a result of our obedience verse 14 says there will always be flour and oil left in your house in this time of famine you won't lack anything as a result of your ability to pray be humble and obey Mm. the promises of God become your portion Mm. you position yourself rightly as a result of being willing to obey the Lord and this story closes kind of, uh, it kind of takes us on a turn that I wasn't expecting, but I love that Elijah spoke from a place of understanding. He wasn't saying to this widow um, something that he hadn't actually lived. He's telling her, fear not, give me what you have first and then the Lord will prepare this promise for you. He says, I'm not afraid of that because I've lived through the God that showed up in the moment where I needed him to provide. So I can tell you with confidence that if you trust him, if you give first and you obey, then surely he'll do just what he said. And that's my promise. That is my petition. That is my heart posture for you watching today. The same God that did it for Elijah. The same God that did it for the widow. The same God that did it for Jackie laying in a hospital bed as a mama that didn't know how this baby was going to live. Wants to show up and do it for you too. You woman that's dealing with infertility. I have friend after friend after friend that had high risk pregnancies that dealt with infertility that are rocking babies in their arms right now. Come on Mishi. Come on Tamika who just did her gender reveal. See the Lord is the same yesterday, today and forever. He is no respect of persons. He wants to show up for you as well. Will you trust him? Will you believe him to do it just like he did the last time? These principles of prayer and humility and obedience and having the faith and resolve to believe him again, to go to him for instruction are in place still. Mm. The the story closes in verse 17 through 24 where the widow's son gets sick and dies. This thing that has been birthed by the Lord dies. Mm. Elijah, Mm. good old Elijah, is consistent in producing the same type of legacy. Mm. He does the same thing it, you saw him at the brook. He goes, he prays in humility, and the Lord answers. You saw him when he got to the gate of Zarephath. He prays, he, he stands in humility, he obeys, mm-hmm. and the Lord shows up not just for him, but yeah. now for the widow. He impacts the lives of all those that are around him. So good. He sees this widow now 
dealing with another crisis. Mm. And he, res- he responds consistently, knowing that the same God that did it before mm. is going to do it again. The mm. Bible says that he takes this little boy up to this room. Mm. He stretches himself out over this boy. He cries out in humility before the Lord. Mm. And he prays and asks the Lord to heal this child. Obedience, faith, and resolve show up again in a moment where it looks like it's a dead situation. No matter how bleak, no matter how dark, no matter how long you've been in your house, no matter how long you've been without work, no matter how long you've been expecting God to to, um, show up and fulfill on his promise, he is going to do just what he said he's going to do. The Bible goes on to close this story by showing proof. That if you believe him, if you trust him, if you have faith and believe, he'll do the exact same thing that he's done over and yes. over and so over good. again. He'll show up and do just what he promised. Man. This this baby boy comes back to life and he's able to put this baby back in the arms of his mother. And I said, God, why after she had gone through so much, would you allow her to go through the death of the thing that you had birthed? Verse 24 mm-hmm. is the closer. Mm-hmm. It says... The widow says, now I know for sure that you are a man of God and Mm. that the Lord truly speaks through you. Mm. Without persistence in prayer, without Mm. humility, without obedience, Mm. without faith and resolve, we never get to the now I know for sure moments Mm. where we get the confidence, the resolve, the wherewithal to say that after I've done all the stand, I'll stand there for again believing he'll do just what he did every other time when I needed him. In the times of lack, in the times where I didn't know the way that I should take, he showed up time and time and time again. Because we are consistent in our ability to do the same thing over and over, no matter what the story looks like. Because one thing that I always preach to my friends is that after you're done with this mountain and you're done with this journey, there's going to be something else that the Lord is requiring you to put forth the same principles so that other people behind you can, can follow and live in The reality is, is that my heart desire is that every girl, every guy that comes close and becomes a part of Forward City Church and becomes a part of Pastor Travis Green life and my life is that I pray that they live a life, they live a legacy of freedom, that they would be bold enough to live in the confidence that God will do what he said that he would do, not just for them, but for you as well. You watching online, I pray That you leave a legacy behind where you're showing forth some of the fruit, some of the principles, just like Elijah. Mm -hmm. Prayer, humility, obedience, faith, and resolve. Mm -hmm. Don't give up on a God that never gives up on you. Mm -hmm. Think about in this time, be legacy minded, legacy focused, recognizing that people won't do what you say. They'll do what you actually continue to do. And as we think about how our lives are telling a story, I pray that the message, the words that are, read, that are read about as people collect our actions time over time will be a, a legacy and a life full of living as children after God's own heart. Mm-hmm. That we live a life that consistently shows glory to the Father. That we live a life consistently obedient to the Father. Just like this prophet Elijah. Come on. I talked about in the beginning that the, the legacy maker the, the God that was the most legacy minded I am about my father's business I recognize that what I do will have an effect for thousands and thousands and thousands of years that from generation to generation the blood that I shed on Calvary will still be speaking I want you to know that the same power that rose that God mm. from the dead lives in each and every one of you. So that same power, that same ability to have an imprint on the future based on what you're living right now so is good. still available right now so for good. us to live in. Amen. I don't want you to take for granted that every opportunity that you get up with breath in your lungs, it is vital that you humble yourself and pray to gain instruction, to obey, to have faith and resolve to do again what he's called you to do. God needs us to live with the posture of understanding that there's legacy in mind, Mm -hmm. that my actions will speak louder than just this moment. Mm -hmm. I pray that as a result of today, that you take into account, that you take self observation What do people believe based on the way I live? Mm -hmm. What are people reproducing based on the way I live my life? Mm -hmm. God is saying something through the way you actually live. Let's bow our head and pray. Good, so good. God, you are the master of the universe. Mm -hmm. You are I am that I am. Mm -hmm. You are all that we need. 
You are the best example. That's what it means to be a Christian. It's to be Christ's light. Yep. I pray that you find fruit in our lives each and every day in our conversations, in our times of weakness. God, I pray that we will bow our heads in humility and pray to you, a God that will give us instruction. A God that won't just give us instruction, but will give us the will and the power to do what you say. To obey you, Lord, and have the faith to believe that even if we don't see it with our eyes, we can see it with our spirit and we'll continue to say what we heard until we see what we see. Yes, God. God, I thank you for giving us resolve, even in the times of crisis, that our message that we live with our lives will align with the words that we speak. That the things that people are able to continue to live and reproduce as a result of looking at our lives will mm -hmm. bring you glory and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 There are people that are watching this message right now that have been longing to find an example. Maybe you've been trying to figure it all out on your own and you're tired of erroring. God, I, I thought this was the way that you wanted. I thought this was the way that I should take. And the Bible actually says that there's a way that seems right to a man yep. and then in the end it leads to destruction. I don't want you to live that way anymore. I want you to live in light of the fact that there is a savior. There is a master of the universe that knows every one of your days before one comes to be. That is so mindful of you. The Bible says that we are the apple of his eye. And we are the sheep of his pastures and no other voice should we follow. I pray that Good. as you hear the voice of the Lord calling you by name, that you answer today. The Lord desires for you to rededicate your life where he can be the Lord of your life. He can sit on the seat of your heart. And even if you've never made the decision for the, forever before, he's giving you the invitation to do it for the first time. If you're watching online right now, you would like to make the decision to give your life to this God that I'm talking about, to live in the legacy that he's produced that is so fruitful, that is so full. I pray right now that you bow your head with me and repeat after me. God, uh -huh. thank you, thank thank you, you for, saving me. for saving me. Thank you, thank you for, dying on the cross for dying on the cross for my sins, for my sins. and for getting up, and for getting up with, all power with all power in your hands. In your hands. I, confess you I confess you as the Lord of my life, Lord of my life. And, I give you and I give you permission to reign. To reign. God, we give you our life. We give you our heart. Lead us forward in legacy. Lead us forward in, legacy. in Jesus' name. Name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you just made this decision, we want to say that we are so absolutely proud of you. It's the best decision that you could ever make. Make sure right now that you go into the comments below and actually fill out the form. It is so imperative that we're able to reach out to you and start on this new journey with God going forward. It means everything to us to be able to partner with you. I know that your life will be forever changed. We love you. Can't wait to see you again. Our past is gone. Our future is waiting. Let's move forward. Wow. Hey family, we hope that something that you heard really blessed your life and we want to hear all about it. Be sure you follow us on all our social media. That's at Forward City. Hey, if you want to partner with us by giving, the link is below. But before we leave, we would love to pray together with you. God, we thank you for our friends watching right now. We pray that your blessings will be all around them. Use them for your glory. Move them forward in every area of their life. In Jesus' name, amen. We love you. See you soon. Love you.